Hi, welcome back today. Uh, as you can probably hear, I've got the ribbon burner going, got the forge in there. I've had several little projects that I needed to do, so I've got them pretty much done. I, a little bit of grinding left on one project, but other than that, now I can turn my attention to knives. Now, that's what I'm doing. I've got one in the one in there right now. I, I redone my uh, my tube that I put in there to keep the flames off of it. Well, I didn't put a back in it and close the tube up, so flames was getting in there and it actually just burnt burnt the end of it off, basically. So I turned it around and, and put a uh, another piece of metal on the top and on the back to shut it down. So hopefully it's thicker, so hopefully it'll last a long time. That has lasted a couple of years, so uh, if I have to build one of them every couple of years, I ain't too worried about it. But now, I have dropped a, a bolt in my oil, not my big quench tank, just my little ammo box, because everything's got clay in it. Those long stuff that I'm not going to put uh, anything on, I'll go in that tank or over there. I don't want to contaminate it with the uh, come on clay. So basically that's it. So let me get this turned around here. Hopefully this one knife will be ready to go and I will show you and it's stick it, uh, sticking to or not sticking to the magnet and then into the quench. And then I'll proceed to do the rest of them off camera and I'll come back to you when I've got a baker's dozen of them heat treated. So from there we go on to the next phase after that other than cleaning and we'll clean them up a little bit then we we'll go to the next phase so let me turn you around here and see if I can't get on it be right back okay now there's this got it going I don't know if the knife's ready or not yet but I'll look to see yes I'd say that it is ready here is the magnet line so we do that Another one in there, this is a little thinner metal, so it won't take as long. So, see what that does. Uh, I hope I showed you going in the tube in there. So, you raise it, like I said, the tube. Probably not. Okay, then let me get it on in here.
point and rest them on the off here. One quick note while I've got you here, let me get this zoomed out. Okay, one quick note on the on the pressure tank. Uh, the pressure cooker that I converted into a pressure pot. I found several little 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 tiny just nearly nothing leaks, but yet they leak it down overnight. So this morning I had about about 15 pounds in it. So and I found the culprit, which I didn't find yesterday, but I found it uh, this morning. So now. Just for the heck of it. I'm sorry about the ride. Uh, put about 50 pounds in it earlier. Today, this morning. I don't know what time it is. Probably, probably about four hours ago. I put 50 pounds in it, and now it's holding. Yes, I had just a just a minuscule of leaks right there. Just right here where the valve screws onto that right there just a little bitty one but it's enough to make a beard make it bubble up and when I get all these heat treated I'll take them in there and we'll put them in the freezer all right catch you then okay I'm back I got all of them out of the uh, heat treated got all my knives heat treated and everything now these four right here which three of them is these three right here are 1095. I went straight into oil with them. This one's 8670, and I forged this in my hand, forged this in completely flats and I mean everything, and then just ground it, just ground it, and grinded it to shape. So getting a little better at that. So, but these was these were stock removals. So was the rest of them right there. But I've got plans to do more with uh, forging. Now all of these, the little cleaver, it's stock removal. It's 8670 L6, depending on where you get it. Pops, knife supply, it's 8670 other places, it's L6. So it went... It went straight into to the oil. Okay, this one. Uh, I believe this one also is eighty six seventy L six. I didn't mark them. I usually stamp the tang, but I didn't on these. But for some stupid reason, but I didn't. I done an interrupted quench on it. water, then oil. Stuck it in there, hesitate, pulled it out. Let is in the water probably a second or less. Pull it out, put it in the parts uh, 50 or the AAA, the whatever the McMaster car. It's an 11 second oil. So, okay. So, same way with this one. Interrupted quench. I didn't hear any tings or anything. This one's up made out of 01. This one went straight into oil. No water, no nothing. Just straight into oil. This one is going to be 1095 and done one second interrupted quench. Same way with this one interrupted quench, water, then oil. I said you go in and hesitate just for a split second and pull it out. Probably in the water less, probably a second, but no more than a second and a half. Okay, another one. All of the rest of them is been inter has been uh, quenched done the interrupted water quench so maybe it will set the uh, the hamon out a lot better and I may just do a little vinegar and uh, and lemon juice instead of ferric on one or two of them just to see how that does compared to the ferric about bringing out hamon same over this and I wound up with a baker's dozen so, so I figured before I got to take them and stick them in the freezer, and I'm all nasty and everything else like that, 
I figured I got them. I had them. And I had them out the other day. It's some copper discs. These are two and a half inch circles. And they're uh, 32 ounce. So that's probably 20 gauge is sheet metal wise. Uh, and when you get into like copper sheets and stuff like that, brass, uh, well, you get it. Well, brass is engaged, so is copper, but copper mainly goes by the ounce a lot. And the higher the number, the thicker the copper. So, what that means is if you get 16 ounce copper, it's which we I always done with 16 and, and heavier is that means one square foot of it weighs one pound 16 ounces 22 ounce we've done a lot of 16 and 22 ounce and then done some 24 and done uh no i think 24 is about the about the most i've ever done at work i've done i've done uh thicker elsewhere but when i was working for somebody else you know, I think about 24 ounces, probably about as heavy as it went, and everything. And this stuff right here, it's anti, and except it's almost like honey, almost. It means that pathogens won't grow in it and won't attach and everything. That's the reason they put copper on ships, on wooden ships and everything. The copper it to keep barnacles and stuff from growing on it, which they still do, but not as bad. And uh, so, and Paul Revere, <clears throat> yes, the Midnight Ride, Ride Silversmith, Paul Revere, actually put the copper plating on the, on the bottom, above, below the water line, on the USS Constitution, the ship, when it was built. He done that, put the copper on and uh, so he was not only just a silversmith or what a whitesmith he was also done copper work too and so but right now i'm going to try to raise a few i've got six discs i'm going to raise a few spoons with it like that and i've been making tools and first one thing today so good and greasy but that's all right it, it'd be all right on this it'll have to be cleaned up anyway so might as well. So let me get get you down here on the anvil, and then we just zoom you on in so you can see a little bit right there. Okay. Now this right here is part of a black pipe fitting that is a union. It's got brass insert in it right here on the inside. That's brass inside the cast iron and everything it had a piece of pipe in it so I welded uh, just a piece of all thread or a little piece of a bolt to a half inch it'll go in my pritchel hole didn't have to do anything to it because it's already tapered and everything this is the female's half of the uh, of the union and uh, so so it makes the edges nice and smooth Got good transitions, they're not beat up. You take a good ball peen hammer and then you just start on it. That's two and a half inch. I have, I made, I ordered some, some bearings. This one's an inch and a half. So, actually, 
probably the the one inch would probably work. Yeah, I don't know if I like that or not. Honestly, I believe I'd just rather do it with a my ball paint. But I thought I'd try them. Okay, take that. Big, that's uh, a two and five sixteenths trailer ball right there. Okay, that's a little one, just a little shallow bowl. Okay. Okay, that was the first raising and annealing of six bits. Or, it was already annealed. I annealed them the other day and just had them laying here. But that was six. Turned it into a bowl and then re annealed in water. And I don't know how long it took, but it wasn't long. And the second one goes, will go just as good as the first time depending on the size that you want to make. Now, you, you can go, if you're going to make, try, make like a cup or something with it, it'd take a while to do that. And, but I'm not going to do that. Because once you get it turned so far, you have to start working it from the outside, to raise it on up some more. But uh, if you're doing that, you want to start in the middle and, and work your middle thin, thin earth. And then turn, when it starts turning, then you can, uh, Turn it over, then go back and flatten the bottom of it, and start going up the side. Uh, but anyway, I'll when I go to put these knives in the freezer, I'll show them to you in there. All right? Okay, I'm back in the, in here now. So turn on some lights. I just walk to the door, set the camera up. Here's uh, six bowls. They're not perfect, but that's okay. I ain't either, so uh, I'll have to figure out what kind of handles I want on them. I've got five little bit shallower one, ones and then a little deeper one to go with the others that I made. So right here, let me reach behind you. Right here. Okay. Now, right here is vinegar. Just, whew, good Lord, white vinegar. And it had whatever was on the copper before on it. 
So I'm just going to set it down right here for just a second. And then put these in there. The impurities and everything. Finger oils, oils on top of them and everything else. Kind of do. So, okay, there they are. They'll be in there cleaning away. So I'll let them sit for a day or two before I do anything else with them. So there was them. It only took about the same amount of time to raise them the second time. Because all I done was after I got them out of the bucket of water, was put them back over that two and five sixteenths ball and just smooth them around. Just run around them a couple of times. Smoothing that didn't take long at all. So now I have a piece of plastic here, blue plastic. And you'll have to pardon me, I'm, this this place is a mess. That's one thing I didn't do while I was wasn't doing anything else. I didn't clean. Alright, that's as far as I can get the door open on it. But I'm gonna stick it right here in the bottom. And I'm gonna put school bus. I think a, I think a grand a grand monster may be coming in, in today. So I don't know, maybe she is. She is she she'll get her a bath right now in all this rain. So but any, uh, with that, me bringing them down, I'm gonna put them in a solution of uh, of RV antifreeze. I got a fight with our hose a while ago. You have to excuse me, and I lost. There's plenty of dust on me. So, but uh, I'm going to put RV antifreeze and dry ice. And it, dry ice is 109.7 or, or 109.6 or something like that. Almost 110 below zero. So, and it's going to be in the 60s. So, at room temperature, there are six be about 60 degrees. Okay, now we're going to that. That's a 170 degree swing. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing them down to freezer temperatures because the freezer is already going and I've got stuff in there and I don't need it. So it's at 20 below. So I take them out at 20 below zero and go to 110 below. I've got to move 90, about uh, what, about 90 degrees, and yeah, about 90 degrees. So that's a lot easier than taking 170 out of it, taking 90 is. So that just gives me a jump start on all that, and they're nice and hard, good and straight. Uh, every one of them looks like they're good and straight. Look, they stated it. if one bends or whatever like that, or it is bent, I'll temper it straight or try to if you don't I'll break it just to see how the grain structure is because I do that every once in a while you have to you can't just keep spit out knives and knives and knives and never do any QC on them you've got to see what your grain structure is every once in a while by chance or by luck or just sheer necessity you break one and you look at it and what you want is a grain size like powdered sugar, not like beach sand. Mm -mm, nope. Or gravel. Nope. If it looks like gravel, you've done something wrong. Bad. And uh, the finer it is, the more connections it makes, the tougher the knife. That's what the dry ice and stuff is for. To help get it down. Yeah, I see. I seen her go by in that. And out the window there in the reflection of the camera. I seen her go by. So Hadn't seen her in a couple of weeks. Anyway, rotten thing. But uh, anyway, so when I come back, these may be in there a week or so. I, it's all depended on what, where, and when I could find dry ice. Uh, Ingles, the grocery store is the only people that carry it, and they have a delivery Thursday afternoon. So usually on Friday, if they've got it, I can get it on Fridays. And then I can do it, but so this 
time of year they may not be getting none in at all and I'll get somewhere around 10 or 12 pounds of that It'd be about $25 worth of dry ice to put in there so and then that'll stay till it sublimates off and gone and if it's a day if it's four days five days whatever with that that's fine I just let it go and let it go and let it come up gradual back up to room temperature then before I normalize then I'll or do the temper then I'll do a double temper on it and I'll temper these about 400 degrees uh, I'll leave them I'll put them in there and turn them on and let them come up with the heat hold them at uh, at the 400 degrees 410 somewhere and then there for about an hour hour and a half whatever like it, and then turned it off and let it go up down with it and when it cools off I'll do the same thing again ramp it up let it ramp up in there with it and everything so not to shock the knives don't want to shock any of them I don't want to take one from here already into a 400 degree box and stick it in it don't want to shock it I want it to come up gradual with it so that's my philosophy on it now other people do other things and that's fine that's their way of doing it they got each person's got a different way of doing it. and but that's my way right wrong or other it's it's just my way so anyway when I get when I get to the dry ice I will start and show you that and keep up with it then till I till it's time to start grinding on them again but till then they're gonna stay in the freezer so part two of this or three or twelve or seventy two will be when I get dry ice so until then it's Bobby Shulsey God bless <laughs>